All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. We want to give all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekal Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. That's right. And uh, salutations to the elect brethren out there pushing the word in sincerity and truth. Person they live and they free to do so. And of course, to those men, we say Shalom, Wa Baraki, and Mount Thumb. Peace and blessings upon you uh, and your household and your loved ones, okay? Uh, here we have a lesson that's going into basically precept scriptures. You know, ideas to keep in your mind, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, and this video, of course, is for the elect, you know, the basically a uh, faith booster, you know, this precept to keep in the, uh, the back of your mind, you know, uh, on your daily, uh, daily journey. Come. Okay, and it's truth, man. Because the, 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 the scripture, the scriptures, get that real quick, uh, Hebrews 4, uh, 4 and 12, Come. you know, because the scriptures is known as the, as a sword, okay, the yeah. word of the Lord. And this is how we, uh, we fight this spiritual battle, okay. That's right. This Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, For the word of the Heavenly Father is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, mm -hmm. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Yeah, the, uh, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Okay? So this is how we, this is what we, uh, we use to combat uh, uh, demons that may be plaguing us in our minds, just like how uh, Hamashiach Yahushua did when he was getting tempted by Satan. Right. The way he combated Satan was what? Through uh, the scripture, through the word. Okay? That's right. Yeah, because if I could say this, you know, because always the, the, the scriptures were always looked upon as something to defend us, mm -hmm. you know, because essentially the scriptures and the words of the scriptures or uh, the Bible or the, uh, you know, the the book is of the Heavenly Father. And these are literally what the Heavenly Father wanted to profess and his wisdom that that he wanted to have written down on paper. OK, so this is our form of of, of defense or refuge. Mm -hmm. So it says, um. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrows, and is a discerner, a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was the point. We wasn't expecting to open up with that scripture, but you know it's all the spirit. Yeah, but like, you got it, brother. Nah, cause uh, hey, yeah. even even uh, you know, going back to this precept too, because that tells you that that we're in we're in some sort of battle, we're in some sort of uh, fight. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's there's ways because the fight that we're in, we can't fight it physically. Right. You can't go up to Satan and smack him in the face. You gotta actually <laughs> fight him spiritually, yeah, man. Yeah. There's no way that we can actually beat Satan physically. We have to beat him fit, uh, uh, you know, mentally, spiritually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what this, that's what these, that's what building up your arsenal with these precepts is essential for. It's for that fight. Okay. So um, you know, of course, this is one precept that always sticks out to me. And that always, you know, builds my faith. You know, Lord's will built the uh, faith of uh, the Bukhari and Yasharal. Okay, so this is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. But the Most High is faithful, who will, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. And right, and, and, uh, Paul, Paul is writing this to the brothers that were at Corinth, you know, for the same situation that we're going through today, you know, battling Satan. And especially that comes with that temptation that we get because brothers may, brothers may go through throughout different situations to where they feel like they're, they're, they can't take it, you know, or you feel like you, because the Heavenly Father is always, he's always putting you in a position to where you have to rank up, you know. And, and the brother Dequar, the, uh, the brother Dequar was actually making a video about that, um, if, if, I advise brothers to go look at it. It's called progression mm -hmm. because that's essentially what progression is. It's and progression never feels good, man. And sometimes, sometimes it does, but for the most part, when you're in that in that transition of going to point A to point B, that it doesn't feel good, man. Because with that, you have to be broken. You have to be built up, okay. And in order for you to in order for you to truly build stronger, you have to break what's already been there and build it back up stronger, mm -hmm. okay? Because there's certain demons, there's certain uh, powers that are going to be far beyond the power that you're at right. or the faith that you're at, you know, on their left-hand side. So what you have to do is you have to build up your, your right-hand power with the Heavenly Father, okay, to overthrow that demonic power. And this, and this is just one precept that builds that, uh, that fortitude, okay, because it says there have no temptation taking you. But it's such, but such as is common to men. So everything that the heavenly Father has put in us, has put us through in this flesh, is common to men. The reason why is because brothers before have been through it. Look at just look at Paul for an example. Paul been bit by a snake, a shipwreck, you know, a stone to death. 
these, these are and, and, and right now all we're dealing with is just uh, 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 mental mental the main thing that we go through right now is mental right, okay right. it's not physical these men actually went through words okay but the Heavenly Father said what he's not going to tempt us above that what we are able because the Heavenly Father knows our limits because he created us okay that's why he said he is faithful and just as just as the Heavenly Father is we're supposed to be okay so we're supposed to have faith in the Heavenly Father whenever it comes to temptation yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yep. uh, you you mentioned uh, the progression, yep. uh, the progression period, you know that we all we all have to go through if we're in the faith, man. And of course, you know that progression period doesn't feel good, mm -hmm. you know, but it has to be done. You know, you could liken that progression period to going to the gym, you know, lifting heavy weights. You know, it it, it, it could be uh, strenuous if that's even a word on your body, but at the end, you know, there's there's a there's a result on it. Yeah, yeah there's a result to it. And that's likening it to us because the scripture says we're we're gold, okay? Kind. We're gold, but in order to get gold in its purest form, you have to get all of its impurities out. That's right. You know, and during that process, it doesn't feel good. You know, I'm gonna get that. That's uh, the book of Zechariah, chapter thirteen, verse nine. It says, "I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried." Mm -hmm. And they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say it is my people, and they shall say the Lord is my power. Okay? But that fire that we're going to be tried with is not literal fire. It's spiritual, man. That's right. And that fire is referred to as trials and tribulations. Okay? This is the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 11. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, and that's referring that's referring to uh, trials and tribulation, man, that we all have to go through. Okay, okay? but just going into that that progression period that we all have to go through. You know, it has to be done, but you know, of course, you know, us being in flesh, it's not gonna feel good, man. Okay, and but, um, so like, now you got it. No, I was gonna say, uh, right, but a scripture that uh, a scripture that uh, you know, I keep you know my arsenal, of course. You know, it's, uh, it's a scripture in uh, 1 John, the third chapter, because basically, you know, us being in the flesh, you know, we're going to go off and we're going we gonna to go off a lot and we're going to go off even to the point like we don't even mean to, man. Yeah. That's why all this is about your conscience, where, where your mind is at, because we're, we're getting saved based, all, uh, based all, uh, on our intents of the heart. OK, based on our intents of the heart. So uh, kind of scripture, you want to say something? Right no, nah, because I was going to say that's crazy that you say that. Because that's essentially what, uh, uh, all throughout the book of Timothy, that's what he's trying to tell us. He's saying your conscience has to be good, yeah. you know? It's all about where your conscience is. And that's, it, it's crazy to think that's the main thing that's going to get us saved. Right. Not what we do physically. It's not, physically what we do is not going to get us saved. Because the scriptures say what? That we're not justified by the laws. Right. But we're justified by faith. And that's something that you can't have. That's not something that's physical. That's actually something that's mental. Yeah. That's something that's in, within your rechah, okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, actually, when you look up, actually, can you uh, just find any scripture that says a uh, heart, or uh, if you can look up uh, this, yeah, just go on a blue letter and just look up heart, okay? Because that word, that word is very important, man. To find out what your heart is. That's right. Okay, because the, the scripture said that the Lord tries the uh, the reins of men, meaning what the minds of men. Come. Okay. If, if yeah, I could bring yeah, this yeah, quick precept up, this First Timothy chapter one, chapter one. I start at uh, 18. It says, This charge I command, uh, Salah, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. And that's essentially what this is. This is a warfare. Like we said, we battle against, uh, and it tells you in the, the warfare is explained in Ephesians the sixth chapter, okay, against uh, certain de uh, demons, you know, deities, uh, 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 Darkness, principalities, okay, powers of the left-hand side. So it says, verse uh, verse nineteen, and there's the point. So how do you how do you obtain a good warfare? Or how do you, how do you hold down your part on that good warfare? Verse nineteen, it says, holding faith and a what? Good conscience. So that's the way that we that's that's essentially what's gonna save us. Because at the end of the warfare, which essentially, if you if you endure to the end, as the scriptures say, what the same shall be saved. Okay, 
So this battle is about longevity, mm -hmm. okay? This battle is about, is about endurance. So these are the precepts that help us endure, that help us get that longevity, okay? And these are traits that we actually need. This is imperative to have, yeah. okay? And anything, Salah. Now I'm going to say, because Timothy was talking about the conscience, right? Con. Your conscience is, is what? Your mind. Yep. Now the Hebrew word for heart is what we say it all the time, is law. Okay, but the definition that the blue letter, uh, blue letter Bible have to give about the Hebrew word love is what? It says inner man. So the most high is, 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 is judging of, you know, the, the whole full letter. You know, the, the way we're going to be saved is how, how good our inner man is. Yep. It says our mind, will, heart, understanding. It also says what? Uh, oh, this one doesn't say it, but... Uh, and other definitions, it says spirit, you know? Kind. Your, your mind being your, your spirit. Oh, there you go. Uh, the third definition, it says soul, heart of man. That's and beautiful, that's, And man. that's what the most high is judging us off of. That's you know? so beautiful. Hey, and you know what's so beautiful about that, too? Yeah. Because the Heavenly Father, that's why the scriptures say he's faithful. Because one thing as a man you have to understand, that this flesh is not who we actually are. Yeah. This is just a capsulation of our soul. It's not truly who we are. Exactly. And that's why we're being judged by the inner man. Because we're in right now, this is this is not who we can truly profess yeah. to be. Right. Man, you got it, you got it. Exactly, because the Lord knows that we're gonna go up. Kind. Because that will happen because we, we are in this flesh. But the thing is, is that the brother said this thing is about longevity. Yep. Keeping on keeping on and turning back from those ways. And if I can, you yeah. know, please, I, please. I'll get uh this is Proverbs twenty four. Verse 16, and it says, For a just man follows seven times and rises above yeah. again, but the wicked fall into mischief. And that's also a good scripture, you know, the, the keeping your arsenal, man. Exactly. The, 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 uh, on your daily journey in this walk of faith, you know. A, a just man's going to fall seven times, but what? He's going to get back up. Because, uh, uh, you know, this world will teach you that a loser is somebody that just loses. Yeah. You know, a true loser is somebody that quits and don't exactly. get back up. Exactly. That's you right. Know? <laughs> exactly. But because we we all fall short of the glory, but what what counts is it counts in your mind, your soul, your inner man. The the Hebrew word la, okay. And if, if it's in your mind to keep trying to the best of your ability, you know, Lord will the, the Lord have mercy upon you. Come, That's come. what it's all about. Come, because what does Scripture say? Uh, you know, uh, blesses the man who has not let his conscience condemn him. Yeah, yeah, you know. So 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 if so if you if you don't let your sins weigh you down, you know, if, if you don't let your sins weigh you down, you know, you're going to keep on going in this thing, you That's know, right. because, because if we, if we think about, because in this truth, if we, if we just dwell on the things that we did in the past in this world, mm -hmm. then none, then none of us would make it, right. you yep. know, yep. then none of us would be able to continue, you know, but we move, we move past that and we understand that this thing goes way, way deeper than just, than, than just the flesh. It's about the spirit. You know, it's about having faith. That's the first commandment. The first commandment is faith. That's right. You know, can you grab Sirach chapter 14, verse 2? Come, huh. come. And um, real quick, ah, oh, man, I need to get regal, if I'm not mistaken. Nah, that's not the word. But um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to look it up too. But if I'm not mistaken, the Hebrew word for uh, endurance or endure is your call. Enduring. Endure. Y'all will call. That's yeah, well, enduring. Yeah. But you call. I believe it's enduring. Yeah, yeah enduring. Come. And that's and that's 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 uh, uh, synonymous with the word longevity. Mm. And such as resilience or durability. But uh, Bob Kasha. Come. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Sharat. Start chapter, at one. Ch uh, chapter fourteen, verse one. It says, "Blessed is the man that has not slipped with his mouth." And it's not pricked with the multitude of sins. See, it said, "Blessed is the man that is not uh, that had." Read it one more time. Said, yeah, this is uh, this is uh, Sirach chapter fourteen verse one, and it says, "Blessed is the man that have not slipped with his mouth." Exactly, the scriptures say, "Blessed is the man that have not slipped with his mouth," because we know the mouth is really just an interpreter of what you're thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, <laughs> it's better that you're not slipping your mind either. Okay. Yeah. But when you let those things profess, that's actually you actually believing what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Or it's it's really it's a, a profession of what you're thinking on your mind. Okay. That's why it says, "Blessed is the man that has not slipped with his." Uh, read it one more time, Brother Shout. Yeah, it says, "Blessed is the man that have not slipped with his mouth." Yep. And keep reading. And it says, "And it's not pricked with the multitude of sins." Exactly. It says it's not pricked with the multitude of sins, which we know prick means like stab. Okay. Because these th that's the thing. Of course, sin is gonna is gonna detriment you. It's gonna bring you to a state because you you, as a man, you understand you don't want to piss off 
the, the creator, the, per, the, 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 uh, the being that's responsible of who made you, okay? We don't want to piss him off. But it says, blessed is the man that's not pricked with the multitude of his sins. The reason why is because there's forgiveness, right. okay? Mm -hmm. What would be the point of Yahweh Shai if we didn't have forgiveness, okay? That's right. The, 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 the Yahweh Shai is there for a reason, okay? The Heavenly Father has given us forgiveness, so you take advantage of that, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, because essentially as we man, we know that we're going to fuck up. The Heavenly Father knows that too. Yeah. That's why he. That's why. Why do you think he put words like this in the priest in uh, in the scriptures, man? And I, that's why I believe through the Spirit. That's the ultimate gift that we, as the hopeful elect, can receive. Yeah, to man. have our our sins blotted out. That yep. actually, because you know, you might have somebody bring up accusations before you before the Most High, but through the blood of Hamashiach Yahushai, you know, the, the the say that you're blameless. This man's without yeah. blame. That's uh, a that's. Uh, a, Cause God. that's the ultimate blessing. Uh, we even though for, we sinned, too, even, man. even though we did, yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. And that's the mercy, cause man, we gotta grab that. Can you yeah. uh, grab Sirach, the second chapter, of Luke, Shah? Hey, let, let me read this right yeah, quick, please. Uh, this is uh, this is what we're looking forward to, man. The scriptures, uh, just the heartbreak. What you said the title was gonna be? Uh, keep in mind, yeah, the, the scriptures yeah. that just, just, to keep, yeah, just to keep in mind, man. That the whole for let is what is gonna have their sins forgiven, man. Yep. Uh, right. This is Revelation chapter seven, verse fourteen. It says, "And I said unto him, Sir." Thou knowest, and he said, uh, it says, sir, thou knowest, and he said to me, these, no, I start at 12, I mean 13 to make sense. It says, and one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? It's talking about the 144,000, because right now I'm in Re Revelation 7 chapter, okay? So it says, what are these which are arrayed in the white robes? Whence come they? And white represents purity okay to be basically blameless okay mm -hmm. verse 14 it says and i said unto him sir thou knowest and he said to me these are they which which came out of great tribulation mm -hmm. and have washed their robes and and made them white with the blood of the lamb okay and that's what we're looking forward to to be made white uh, with the with the blood of hamashiach yahushai and that word white means to be pure blameless okay also another one right quick yeah, it also means to be without stain. Yeah, without stain. Because, what, and what is that stain? It's sin. Yeah. You know? That stain is sin. To be found without stain. That's a good definition, man. This is uh this is first John chapter one verse seven. It says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one another, uh one with another, and the blood of Hamashiach Yahushai, his son, cleanses cleanses us. From all sin. And that's what we look forward to, man. Damn. That's what we look forward to. You know? And the Heavenly Father, essentially, he's already clean. He already cleansed us from our sins as soon as we repent. Yeah. You know? And that's the beautiful... As we were saying before, you know, that's a part of us not being pricked with our sins. Because it's no point... It's no point of mourning over what you've... You know, the sins that you've committed when the Heavenly Father is already forgiven you. And, and, and that's another... And See, that's the thing, too, man. With repentance, you also have to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's something people seem to forget out of the equation. Although the heavenly, even if the Heavenly Father forgives you, you got to forgive yourself too, man. So that for you forgiving yourself, that means to walk away from what the fuck you're doing. Right. You know? Don't keep trying to commit the same sin and then thinking the Heavenly Father is going to keep forgiving you for it. And then feeling sorry about it the same exact way. Ch change your life, man. Right. The Heavenly Father has given us a time of repentance for a reason. Yeah. You know? So, uh, can you can you continue reading that? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is Sirach chapter Sirach, fourteen. Sirach, you about to say verse, something? Yeah. Oh no no no. Sirach, you got it. Yeah, this is Sirach chapter fourteen verse two, and it says, "Blessed is he who con whose conscience have not condemned him, and who is not fallen from the his hope in the Lord." And that's beautiful, man. Who has not fallen from the hope in the Lord, man? That means remaining, keeping your faith, man, or your I'm a one. Yeah. That's the main. That's the. That's the main thing we always talk about, man. That's the main thing that matters to the Heavenly Father. I'm a one, man. Okay? Hey, uh, read it one more time. Yeah, come on. This is uh, Ecclesiastes, so Sirach chapter 14, uh, verse 2. And it says, Blessed is he whose conscience have not condemned him. Exactly. And your conscience is your what? Your inner man. Or your spirit. Your rechah. Okay? And that can be your lob too. You know? Your spirit is, is the actions that you play out. Your lob is what you think. Okay? So... Either or, it, it says, blessed is the man whose conscience has not condemned him. Right. Because, you're, and, that's, and, and that's crazy because that's what we were talking about the other day when we were coming back from camp. Right. That that's Satan that tries to condemn you, yeah. it makes you think that it's you. 
Right. Yeah, okay. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Satan, hey man, that's why we gotta get on that. That camouflage, man. Yeah. yeah. Satan, it's a Satan has a good way of of camouflaging himself, man. Yeah. That's his best trick to make him seem like he's not there, man. And and essentially, when your conscience is condemning you, that's not really your conscience. Right. That's Satan fucking with you, man. Yeah. And that's why you have to you have to discern the difference between you and yourself. And and I met the, the brother said, uh, and that was very wise words too, man. Any thought of wickedness is always of Satan. Mm -hmm. The heavenly Father made us to be perfect, man. And you gotta understand that we're perfect as men. So any thought of unrighteousness, any thought of wickedness, that's Satan. That's not you, man. So that's why I said. Blessed is he whose conscience have not condemned him. Because essentially Satan is going to make you get condemned yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. The Heavenly Father is not giving you those thoughts. That's Satan, okay? Because he's the one tempting you. So, that was it on that? Yeah. Uh, I believe well, so. Yeah. Was it a little bit more than that? Yeah, uh, I was going to finish it. And who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord. Come. And you know, that that's the, that's the main point right there. You know, because it... Because you, because keeping that faith, that's what's going to keep you going. You know, having faith that you will be saved. Having hope that you will be saved. Absolutely. That's what's keeping everyone yeah. sitting at this table going right now. Right, it's right. that hope that we're going to be saved. Yeah. And, that's, and that's exactly why we got, that, we have, uh, that we have to continue in this day and keep pushing forward, even though we committed sins in the past. You know? Come on. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's beautiful, man. Because hey, we're going to get saved off of, you know, basically we've been harping about is having a, gun, a good conscience before the Lord, man. Because mm -hmm. the Lord sees all, man. Yeah. So, uh, you, you have something? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, actually, uh, I found a word for you, uh, for, for enduring. Go ahead. And this is pertaining to Thahoyim or Psalms chapter 102, verse 26. It says, uh, they shall perish, but thou shalt endure. And the word for endure is imod. Imod. Okay. And that's the word that, you know, that's the word that I've actually been looking for for a minute. Hey, how about Shemel Shai? But, those, you know, that's the word that you can start, you know, you can actually pray for uh, whenever, you know, you're going through a situation. Ask the Lord for, um, you know, I'ma, you know, Nathanle Yad I'ma or Nathanle Now I'ma, okay? Come on. How's it on that? Yep. yep. So uh, this is my next precept, you know, this is a precept to keep in mind, you know, to keep, you know, in your mind on a daily walk of, of this faith of ours. Uh, this is First John chapter three, verse uh, verse eighteen. It says, "My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth." That's right. Okay, because what a lot of people mis misunderstand is that love is actually action, man. You know, it's not just some word that you say. You know, the, the scripture says, "If you love the Most High, keep His commandments." Mm -hmm. Okay, what well, what is love? Okay, yeah. is it love is an action? Okay, yeah. it says, "My little children, my little children." Let us not love in word, neither in tongue. Okay, so don't just say it. But it says, but in deed and in truth. Hereby we know that we are of, we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts. Meaning what? The Hebrew word love before him. Okay, your conscience. It says, for in our hearts condemned us. It says, for, it says, for if our hearts condemn us, the Most High is greater than our heart Come. and know of all things. Beloved, if our hearts, if our heart condemned us not, then we have confidence toward the Most High, and whoso we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son, Hamashiach Yahusha, and love one another as He as He gave us commandment. That's right. Okay. And it says, but He that keepeth His commandments dwelleth. In him and he in him, and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he had given us. You that's know, and that's, and that's the important part, man. Because it said that to believe in the name of Hamashiach Yahusha, his son, it says that to love one another as he gave us commandment. Okay, and that's the important part, man. Love your brother, man. Uh, and you you're supposed to love your brother as you as you as you do yourself, man. That's right. Hey, that's you, you know these brothers you see at the table, man. Yeah, uh, hey, these are my brothers, man. Mm -hmm. I love these brothers, man. That's right. You know, and if a brother is in need, you know, you try. Of course, you know, you may not have the funds for it right away, but you try to the best of your ability, you know, to help. You know, That's helping right. the body of a mashiach yahusha, because we're all part of the body. That's definitely you know? true. Got that scripture that you quoted. Good. You know, this is a lot. If I can say this real yeah, quick, yeah, you got it. No, nah, because I was gonna say another, another important part of that precept is that the heavenly Father said He shall dwell in us. Yeah. He and him. Uh, he and and them and him and us. Okay, so what you have to start to understand 
is that the old person that you were is nothing to the Heavenly Father. Right. That's that's dumb. The Heavenly Father can give a fuck less about it, you know? So when the Heavenly, what makes us, what makes us important or what gives us substance to our life is that the Heavenly Father has actually put Yahweh Shai in us, okay? And that's something that a lot of people can't encapsulate. That's something that a lot of people can't withstand. Because with the Heavenly Father putting your house shot in us, we're able to maintain that. And that comes with certain conduct. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we have a ruler class mentality. We're talking about the man that created the earth. Yeah. We're talking about the man that created everything in front of you, man. Yeah. Yahweh Shai gave, uh, Yahweh gave Yahweh Shai charge over everything, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. He gave him preeminence over everything. And he dwells within us. Yeah. So you have to act as, as such, you know? Calm. Calm. This is uh, the book of 2 John, uh, verse 6. And it says, And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as he heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's uh, and that's what the brother was going into. That 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 is real love. And that's that that's following the that's showing love unto the heavenly father, and that's following, following the law, statutes, and commandments. Mm -hmm. You know, that's showing and Yahweh Shah said himself, he said that the two greatest commandments was what? To have no other gods but besides the heavenly father, Yahweh. And to love your brother as, as yourself. Yeah, man. Cause no, that's, that's, those are two great... He said, upon these hang all the law. Come. You know? Because just think about it logically, man. How the hell are you going to say you love the Heavenly Father when he's put himself in another brother mm -hmm. and you despise your brother? Yeah. Yeah. That means you don't truly love the Heavenly Father. Yeah, right. yeah. Because yeah, the Heavenly Father dwells within the, your, the next brother, okay? Yeah. So his traits, the, the Most High is given, uh, or Yahweh Shai is a part of or he's giving a part of himself to this brother. Mm -hmm. So that means you may hate the right hand. Or you may hate the left finger. The left finger now. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because we're all part of one body, man. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're supposed to love each other as such. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because the Heavenly Father has unified him. He has unified us in his name. Right. Okay? So that's why we ought to love each other. And, and you know, that doesn't even come in. We're not talking carnal, man. Because anybody can give you money. Anybody can give you food anybody can give you water anybody can give you shelter it's about what you feed this brother spiritually man yeah. Come. It's spiritual um. food man um. <laughs> God. Oh, you got something though uh, it's all good okay. but uh if any any brothers didn't have anything else we're gonna close out on this yeah come you, you had anything on nah. yeah, you got it. Yeah. but uh you know it's final precept you know uh, something to keep you know in your arsenal your daily walk of faith uh ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 it says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Mm. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where the, thou goest. Okay, so whatever your hand find to do, you know, and you know, when you first come to this truth, you may not know what you're good at, but it's, it's your job to find out what you're good at. And once you find that out, you know, do that to the best of your ability. And the scripture says, do it with all thy might, man. That's right. Do it with all thy might. Okay. And it says, what, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where thou, whether thou goest. So it's not in vain, man. The work that we're putting in. Okay? Because, hey, we, hey, all the brothers at the table can attest to it. You know, we making sacrifices, man. Definitely Easy true. sacrifices is not in vain, you know. Mm -hmm. This is a sweet savior unto the Lord, man. That's right. And it says, uh, it says, it says no work, nor device, nor wisdom, nor knowledge in the grave, man. So this is not for naught. That's right. Okay. So uh, whatever you good at, you know, do it to the best of your ability and have faith. Come the Lord willing, you know, the Lord have mercy upon all of us. Come okay. Come. Brothers, that any last word? Yeah, man. When you come to this truth, you got to do a lot of soul searching, man. Yeah. Because the Heavenly Father, He, you, you're going to definitely find out soon enough what the Heavenly Father's lot is for you, man. Because right. the scriptures also say that in Daniel 12, chapter, verse 13. He said, in the last days, every man shall stand in their lot. Mm -hmm. So the Heavenly Father's going to have you play out your part. You just have to endure or you have to imod long enough for the Heavenly Father to put you where you need to be, man. Right. And that's something you also have to pray to, uh, pray for too, man. Because it's a privilege to actually know your calling. Right, it's yeah. a privilege to actually know what the Heavenly, uh, Heavenly Father has set out for you. You know, and those things are acquired through endurance. Those things are acquired through praying, fasting, you know, because yeah. all of us have done it. You know, all the brothers have done it. You know, we didn't get to where we are right now by not making sacrifices. Yeah. Man. So that's what it takes, man. Exactly. You know, so, with, you know, these are the precepts that we have in our mind that, you know, we keep 
in our arsenal in order to to fight the good fight. Yep. That's safe the book of Timothy's, you know. And, and of course and, there's more. Of yeah, course, yeah, there's, there's always more. Yeah, there's yeah, always yeah. more, man. Of course there's more. But, but this is the one that just came out through the spirit, man. That's right. You know what you say, y'all, man? Yeah. And, and what they said about sacrifice, you know, the biggest sacrifices that you can make as a man is sacrificing your life and your time. Yep. Yeah. You oh know? man. That's and, 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 and that's and that's what we're essentially doing right now. You know, yeah. how we got how we uh, how we got to where we get to, we had we had to sacrifice our time. Yep. You know, we have to sacrifice a lot of time. Yep. And we continue to do so. That's you right. Know? And we and you have to be in that same mindset because you're not going to receive the heaven. Uh, you're not going to receive the kingdom of heaven without sacrificing. You know, something. Something. Yeah, you know, you got to yeah. sac- you got to sacrifice. And, and time is is very precious because it's a substance that you can't get back. You can never yeah, get back. You, know, time. you never get back. It's you know? a lot. If I can say this one last thing, because I actually had a testimony. Because yesterday when I was at the plantation, I was feeling so restless because the person that uh, released me from my post, he took like actually like thirty minutes. Mm. But I was like, damn, like where the hell is he at? Where the hell is he at? But then I thought about it, and I and I, I, I brought myself to a, a form of patience, and I was like, there's so much more that we're going to have to go through, and you're, and you're crying about somebody relieving you, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so, we, there's so much more that you have to prepare yourself for, and, 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 and the things that we're, and I said it all to say that there's so much more that we're going to have to go through, so what we're going through as of right now, take it manfully, man. You know, the Heavenly Father is going to give us the strength to overcome everything we go through as long as, long as we have faith in His name, man. You know? Um, that's, that's all. That's beautiful, man. Um, so with that, you know, we hope you brothers out there was edified. Absolutely. We want to give all praise to Yahweh. Yahweh by, by Hashem. Yahweh Shai by Hashem. Recall Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to the elect brethren out there pushing the word with sincerity and truth. We say Shalom and Abba Ball. Abba Ball. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.